Hey friends, if you create electronic music in any genre, you likely have at least heard about sidechaining. Not only have you probably heard of it, you've probably likely also been bombarded with very rigid opinions about which approach is the best. I'm of course talking about sidechain compression, where you're feeding the audio from one track into another track, versus using MIDI envelopes like the super popular LFO tool by X for Records, or with Ableton's Envelope MIDI or Envelope Max for Live plugin. In this video, we're going to do a deep examination at sidechaining tactics and explore the advantages or disadvantages of both approaches. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Anthony and Ableton Live is my thing. If it's your thing too, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you know when I put out more stuff, right? Let's get it. Okay, so to begin, let's just do a quick review. What is sidechaining? Sidechaining is essentially taking the data or the audio from one track and feeding it into another track to give yourself some kind of mixing advantage. In this case, we're just sending the kick and the snare to this bus of bass and synth here. All right, and we're just using it to get the bass and the synth out of the way every single time the kick and snare happens. Okay, so if I turn this group on, you can see there's two compressors in here, and whenever the kick or the snare fires, this is the kick one and this is the snare one, it will get these instruments out of the way when we hit those kicks and snares. Okay, so let's take a listen. And we can see the visual representation of that happening right here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at what the advantage is. So let's look at the master. So there's an audible advantage, first of all. Let's go ahead and take a listen. So I'll turn this off, okay, so this is just turning off both of my sidechain compressors, and we're going to look and we're going to listen at what's happening, all right? So without the compressors, we get this. So we can hear a lot of things occurring here. We can hear that not only are we clipping pretty commonly without these compressors on, but we're also losing that initial front end of the kick drum, the front end of the snare drum, the smack, right? The, uh, the, the initial transient. And what these compressors are doing is they're getting this bass and the synth out of the way. So the advantage here is that we're going to be able to control our mix a lot better. We're gonna be able to create clarity for our kick and our snare. We're gonna be able to not challenge a limiter as much so we can get our mix louder. There's so many advantages to doing this, okay? But this is also just one tactic okay, for doing this. In this case, we're using audio, all right? So there's audio being sent to this compressor and this compressor from the kick and the snare, okay? So to set this up, it's really simple. I just grab a compressor and I'm putting the compressor on the track that I want to duck, okay? So on this track that I want to duck, this is the instrument. So the bass and the synth are on this bus, if you will. Okay, so I'm gonna open it up, click on sidechain, click on the input and choose kick. So this will be the one for my kick. Now, it's imperative that you set, if you're gonna do this, that you set it on peak mode, okay? So the compressor needs to be on peak mode so it reacts to the incoming peak signal, all right? And then the next thing we're gonna do is we want the kick drum to have absolute control over the ducking. So we'll turn the ratio all the way up, all right? The next thing we're gonna do is turn the attack as far down as we can get away with it without having significant clicking or popping, all right? And you'll be able to determine what that is once you do this, all right? And then release time, we're gonna leave where it is for now. And all that we have to do is let's go ahead and we'll just solo the bass and we'll solo the kick just for the fun of it. So now we can see. We can see the kick drum signal coming in here. So I'll just start to pull this threshold down. So now you can see that every time the kick drum happens, we're pulling the bass down a little bit. But this is working on everything. This is also working on the synth. So take a listen. All right, so I'll grab a second compressor, slap it in here. I'll go a little bit faster. I'm going to open it up, click on sidechain, click on the snare. Okay, so we're clicking on the snare. And the snare is now going to trigger this compressor. So I'm going to turn this all the way up. We're on peak mode, attack all the way down. We'll leave release where it is for the moment. And now we can... So that's how you set up sidechain compression with audio. So what I'll do yet again is I'm just gonna select these two and I'm gonna group them, 
okay? And I'm just gonna collapse this down. I'm gonna turn it off. That is one method for sidechain relationships. Let's explore another one. So I'm gonna grab X for Records LFO tool and I'll drop that on the tracks that I want to duck, okay? Remember, both with compression in Ableton using Ableton compressor and with using LFO tool, we're gonna be putting the device on the tracks that we want to get out of the way whenever the kick or the snare happens, okay? So I'm dragging this into the track and LFO tool is just, it's just fantastic. It's a, it's a great device for a specific job, okay? It's not just a sidechain compression or sidechain ducking device, okay? It can do a lot. If you look over here, you've got all of x for records really great filter algorithms. There are so many things that you can do with this, but what we're going to look at today is just using it as a sidechain ducking device, okay? So... Now, to set this up properly, I have to send MIDI to this, all right? This does not react to audio, okay? So in this case, the LFO tool is not reacting to any audio. It needs actual MIDI data to be sent to it. So how do we set this up? Well, essentially, let's go ahead and close LFO tool for now, all right? And let's go ahead and look at arrangement view. So here we can see this track represented in a linear fashion, and we have a kick, and we have a snare, and we have our cymbals and our drums. So we want to duck the kick, and we want to duck the snare, right? So in order to do this, we have to send the MIDI from the kick to LFO tool. So the first thing maybe you might think to do is just make another MIDI track, and I'll click on this bar, I'll hold Option or Alt, and I'll drag down, and I've just duplicated the MIDI. Now the first thing you might think to do is just, okay, well here's the MIDI right here, why not send this MIDI to instruments, and there's LFO tool, you can see it appear right there. Why this is not a good idea is that this is not a latency compensated way of doing this. Essentially, what will happen is, is if you have more and more and more and more and more tracks on your Ableton set, and you're adding more and more and more system latency, this could make things get off. And the way that you make it right, okay, instead, is to click on the track, and go into your instruments and choose external instrument. What external instrument does is it accounts for the latency of your system, okay, and moves the MIDI so that it's exactly right with your song. If you do it this way, it'll be exactly right every single time. So I'm gonna choose MIDI output to instruments, okay, and you can see that it automatically selects LFO tool because there's only one instance of it, all right? So this track is now triggering LFO tool. So let's open up LFO tool and talk about this. So real quick, sidechain compression, compression in general, dynamics processing, these are very, very complex topics. If you enjoy my teaching style, I just want you to know that I have a course on Ableton Live for mixing and mastering. And in this course, all of this stuff has gone over in excruciating detail. We have a Discord community of a bunch of highly engaged producers. If that's something that you're interested in, I highly recommend that you check out this link or you check out the link down in the description and comments to learn more about my Ableton courses. All right, let's get back to it. So we're not concerned with a lot of what's happening on this interface. We're just concerned with this section right here in MIDI, okay? So this device receives MIDI data, okay, and then interprets it, all right? So at the moment, if I just play LFO tool, this is what it sounds like. I'm just gonna solo the instruments. So as you can see, LFO tool is pretty cool. It's just doing this shape over and over and over again as an LFO or a low frequency oscillator, right? It is just oscillating this one shape. So I can change this shape if I want, and I can also change the rate. Right? So that's fun, and there's a lot of really creative applications for doing that, okay? But what we wanna do is we want this LFO to act instead of as an LFO, as an envelope, okay? So we want it to fire every single time it gets that kick drum. So we're already sending MIDI to this LFO, and the way that we tell it to listen is to click on this button right here. See where it says note retrigger? If I click on this, all of a sudden now, the LFO will receive the kick drum. So check it out. Uh-oh, there's something happening here. It's, it's restarting every single time, but it's also restarting with the kick drum. So you actually have to click this twice. Now you can see where it says ENV. What that means is now it is only receiving the kick drum as the signal to duck, okay? So now you can see, you can visually see the kick drum up here and you can watch this duck with the kick drum. And now I'm gonna bring this all the way down just so we can really hear what's going on, okay? So check it out.
Now, this might seem a little unnatural to listen to this way because we're not listening to the drums, okay? But let's go ahead and turn on everything and now you can hear. that everything is being ducked every single time that kick drum happens. Now, of course, this is extremely heavy handed, right? So the way that we can fix that is bringing this up a little bit so that it's not ducking all the way. We don't need the instruments and the bass to go completely out of the way. We just need them to get a little bit out of the way, right? So in this case, this is a more subtle approach. So in essence, what we've set up is sort of a a mock sidechain compressor, right? Let's go ahead and listen to the instruments by themselves again. Now you might hear a little bit of clicking. You can actually fix that by moving the smoothing up a little bit, just a little bit of clicking, but I'm gonna tell you right now, sometimes that clicking is actually very useful. It's actually a very good thing. Sometimes it adds a little bit of edge to your drums, right? Or if you're doing it in this way, right? Something else I should say is that with this little button on, this displays the, the wave shape, okay, after you have processed it and before it. You can see in gray, we have the initial wave. I'll go ahead and open this up a bit. You can see our initial wave. Let's just go ahead and play it again. You can see that the initial wave looked like this in gray, and then red is representing what the wave would look like after it's being processed, right? So I'll bring this back up a little bit. Okay. So now we need to address the snare. So I'm gonna go through this a lot faster. I'm gonna to go to my instruments. I'm gonna grab an LFO tool, okay? Now we have a second LFO tool and this one will be dedicated to the snare drum, okay? So I need to go to my snare. I'm going to create a new MIDI track, click on this guy, hold option or alt, drag down, and now I have my snare. Now again, I need to grab external instrument, drag it into here, and so now we can see here that I can choose the second LFO tool, and that's what this is going to send the MIDI to. So looking at instruments on my second LFO tool, I'll go ahead and make this a little bit more maybe what I would want it to do. And as you can see, I'll click on this twice to send an envelope, and now we've got every single time the snare hits, we're gonna be ducking. So let's listen to everything. Now, you can also skew this, okay? Essentially, with drums in nature, they make sort of exponential or, if you will, logarithmic kind of wave shapes, all right? Rarely in nature do we have something that decays perfectly linearly like this, which is why this is a really useful setting right here, okay? So I can kind of set this up to be maybe a little bit more logarithmic, okay? And now we can get maybe more of a natural uh, ducking sound, right, for our drums, all right? So now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group these together, right click, and we're gonna have these as a group. So now I can switch between my compressors, okay, and my LFO tool. So let's go ahead and I'll click on my key mapper and I'll click the Q key on both of these on switches so that we can just hit Q and hot swap between these two different approaches to side chain ducking, okay? So starting with the compressors, let's take a listen. Now let's move over to the LFO tools. Okay, so now that we've listened to the differences here, my ears actually are preferring the LFO tools here because they're a lot more surgical. They're getting a lot deeper. Now, of course, I could go into my compressors, right, and I could make my thresholds a lot lower and make the compressors really dig in in the same way that the LFO tools are doing. But in this specific situation where we have no velocity, okay, there's no velocity information on these kicks or on these snares, right? You can see that the velocities are all the same. In this situation where you have very specific samples doing the same thing over and over and over again, LFO tool tends to shine in this specific place, okay? Now we're gonna listen one more time and listen to how LFO tool is very surgical. I'm gonna start with the compressor first and then move over to LFO tool. Now 
Now, this is all fine and good, but what we need to do is we need to explore a second example, okay? Not everybody makes music this way. This is a very common technique for if you're making uh, aggressive music or if you're making house music, techno music, where your samples are not changing in velocity. They're not going up and down. If you've ever worked with a real drummer, when they're playing drums, okay, sometimes it's loud, sometimes it's quiet, right? So what we need to do is we're going to lis listen to the second example. And in the second example, we've got it kind of set up like a real drummer would be, where we've got some velocity information on the kick. You can see the kick is moving around. The snare drum is also moving around. There's some ghost notes, okay? So let's go ahead and listen to this example. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the MIDI by option dragging for the kick and then option dragging for the snare. So now we can AB between both of these approaches with the compressors and with the LFO tool. All right? So let's go ahead and check this out. We're going to start with the compressors, okay? So with the compressors on, sounds like this. So now we're going to go ahead and listen to it with the LFO tool. So as you can hear, uh-oh, LFO tool in this specific situation is so heavy-handed that it's just kind of making the drums splatty, whereas the compressors are smoothly mitigating between those loud and soft hits, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at the compressors as they behave on this, all right? So I'm going to open them up into this mode, and let's take a look at what's actually happening. So with the compressors on, take a look. So we can see that the Ableton compressors are moving up and down with those different hits, right? Whereas LFO tool, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. LFO tool is going to duck the volume the same amount regardless of what the velocity information is. It can't react to different velocity information. Okay, so take a listen. All right, so let's try to dial it back a little bit. Maybe the next argument is that, well, you could dial it back a little bit. You could have a little bit less of an, of an effect, okay? So we'll go to both these LFO tools. We'll take them down a little bit, and let's listen to this now. Still, even in this situation, let's listen to the compressors. Essentially, LFO tool cannot react to that incoming velocity. That's actually sort of not true. There's a setting on here where you can take velocity and send it to the pulse width, okay, the pulse width of this LFO. Now, if I turn this on, let's take a listen. What we're seeing is that this, you can see this is the visual representation of the velocity data and how LFO tool is interpreting it, okay? So that's cool, and you can see that it's opening and closing the, the width, but that's not changing the volume. Unfortunately, LFO tool has no way of taking the velocity information and sending it to the actual volume, okay? Let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages that we've seen in both of these areas, okay? First of all, we can see that with compressor, it's a one setting kind of situation. You drag and drop the compressor into the track you want to sidechain, and then just choose from a drop down menu the audio coming in to open it up or close it, right? It's one step, okay? Whereas with LFO tool, we had to go through all the process of copying each track into a new track using external instrument and sending it into LFO tool. Which, so there's some extra steps to set up LFO tool versus using compressor, okay? Now, the second advantage to using compressor is that, of course, with dynamic material, okay, dynamic material, when we're moving up and down in either velocity or audio amplitude, you can see that compressor kind of helps mitigate the differences in volume by actually ducking more and more or less, okay? And someone else would say, like, well, LFO tool sounds cleaner, man. It sounds cleaner. Well, let's take a look at something else. You can see that this is an exponential curve. You might say, well, I can shape this freely with my hand. Well, take a look at compressor, okay? If we open up compressor and we take a look at what's going on here, you can see down here at the bottom, we have envelope shapes that could be logarithmic or they could be linear, okay? So you're going to set up a logarithmic setting with LFO tool, but you can do the same thing in compressor just by clicking this button, right? 
So you might see that as an advantage with, with LFO tool, but if you're just using LFO tool for, for sidechain ducking, okay, unless you have really rigid material or really aggressive material, such as, you know, dubstep or EDM or something like that, compressor is probably going to be your best go-to tool for most dynamic music, okay? If the music is moving, if it's a live drummer, all right, if you want some variation, if you want the music to sound alive, okay, the compressors almost nine times out of ten with dynamic material are going to end up sounding better. Okay, so now let's explore some advantages of LFO tool. So there's another feature I want to show you with LFO tool that's really cool. So on this first LFO tool that I'm using, this is the one for the kick drum, okay? So I'm going to make this a little bit more drastic, all right? We're going to get a, a big deep cut every single time the kick drum happens. And let's go ahead and move back to this first example where I believe the LFO tool is a better device to use when we have uh, non-dynamic material, right? So now listening to this first one, let's take a listen. We can see it, we can hear that whole mix go away every time the kick drum happens, like, it's like gone, right? Now, in LFO tool, you have this little thing in the corner where you can enable or disable frequency splitting, okay? So essentially, what does this mean? Everything that's in blue, okay, see where it says LF, if I click this again, it'll say HF. Everything that's in blue right here will get affected by the LFO tool. Everything above that frequency, which at the moment is 632 hertz, will completely pass through LFO tool. So what this allows us to do is to get the conflicting information out of the way, right? What is the kick drum making? It's mainly making sub and bass frequencies. So really, in this case, at 632, we have basically enveloped a lot of the sub and a lot of the bass. I could actually pull this maybe down just a little bit. Let's go ahead and say that everything under, yeah, 400 hertz will now be affected by the LFO tool. So check out what happens when I turn this on or turn it off. So I find this to be really powerful. You can get the stuff that's actually in the way out of the way without it sounding so aggressive, right? And that is really, really, really useful. So yeah, that's a stark advantage of using LFO tool because you have that. If you're gonna try to set that up with compressors, you'd have to do some fancy footwork with uh, band splitting and stuff like that. So in this case, you could still set it up with compressors and there's a way to do that, but I'm not gonna go into that right now because that would take a while, okay? So essentially what I wanted to talk about with this video is that the internet is full of people that are trying to make you feel bad, right, for using one or the other tool. I even saw a video where this guy was like, you're an idiot. Stop using compressors. Stop messing with attack and release times. Like that's like dumb of you to do. It's like, no, that's not dumb at all. In fact, attack and release times are really important. Using compressors is, is central, okay, to being good at mixing, right? So don't listen. I mean, like if anyone ever tells you on the internet ever to do things the exact same way every single time, that is instantly suspect. That is just bad advice, okay? Sometimes compressors are great for sidechain compression, especially with dynamic material. Sometimes LFO tool would be a better thing to reach for, okay? Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, everybody.